Let's talk a little bit about how to try and replicate the shape of this fiberglass kayak using wood. If this seems a little out of sync, uh, this is a voiceover. I lost the original audio for this video clip. I'm working on my Ta heat design here, and one of the main goals of taking the lines off the kayak and redrawing them is to try and figure out how much shear I need to build into the gunnels of the boat. Now shear is the amount of sweep that there is between the ends of the boat and the center of the boat, basically. If you can imagine, a hot dog has no shear and a banana has lots of shear. Now when I'm building a skin on frame kayak, the basic process of creating shear is you take your gunnel stock, you're connecting it at the ends, you're bending it open at the middle, and the angle at which you try and bend the two sides relative to each other determines how much shear you get. So the greater the angle between the two sides, the more shear you get. Now, of course, that's going to affect the sides of the boat and how much that they taper in towards the bottom. This model has been built the way I'd normally build a regular kayak, and that is with the gunnel stock being straight. And I'm just going to measure how much shear is in this particular example. And I get something that's probably approximately, uh, say, half the depth of the finished gunnels. By measuring the drawing, I can see I need about six inches of shear. So now the question is, how do I create that? So what I've done is I've made a little model with a gunnel stock that assumes I'm taking, say, a two by four and cutting as much shear into it as possible, which is probably about an inch or an inch and a quarter of shear. Now when I take those gunnels and I bend them around a little spacer, mimicking the angles of the existing boat, and lay it upside down and measure that amount of shear, then I can uh, get a feel for if that's going to get me close. And um, as I measure those, I can see that that's maybe doubling the amount of the width of the gunnels, which is maybe about three inches of shear, so that's definitely not going to do it. So next I take another model, and this one is made, assuming I've got maybe two by six for my gunnel stock, and I saw as much shear into that, measure it, and while I'm getting more and more shear, it's still not getting me close. And so what I've determined is that basically in order to get the amount of shear shown in the drawing, I need to use gunnel stock that is probably about eight inches wide. So using an eight inch wide plank to cut this gunnel stock up uh, seems a bit wasteful. Now I could probably make use of, we'll say 60% of that waste material other places in the boat. I am still not loving the idea and finding stock that that's, that's that wide and clear is getting more and more difficult and certainly more expensive to purchase. So I think the best solution is to steam bend the amount of shape into it. Now this is a bit of a guessing game as to how much you can steam bend in and how much will spring back out, but we'll do our best and uh, see how it goes. So here I've set up a very simple bending jig on my workbench just clamping some blocking to it. I've got my gunnel stock out of the steam box, clamped in place, and it's been in here for a while to cool down. Now we're going to see how much spring back I get. I got about six inches of shear bent into it right now, and um, I'm hoping not too much of that disappears. So I'm just going to try knocking the blocking out and releasing this from the mold and see how much spring back we get. It's always a bit of a crapshoot whether or not you're going to get be successful at steam bending something this heavy. And uh, yellow cedar bends beautifully in small dimensions, but in larger dimensions it's much more difficult to predict what's going to happen. So as I knock this blocking out, I get quite a bit of spring back. Probably more than I would like, so I'll take the clamps off the bench and we'll measure how much shear I've managed to bend into this stock. Now using the front of my bench as a reference, I'll just align the gunnel stock to it and measure how much shear I get, and uh, it's maybe about three inches, I think. As I flip it over, you can get a better feel for how much shape is really there. It's, it's not too bad, and I'll just pick it up and I'll swing it around so you can get a feel for it. So once it's actually sprung around a uh, center mold, that's actually going to create a fairly good amount of shear. Now, not quite what I was hoping for relative to my drawings, but I think it's still going to work out just fine. The idea is to try and produce something that uh, has the shape and size and character of the fiberglass boat, not replicated exactly. You might have noticed how I already had the rib mortises uh, routed into the bottom of the gunnels, and now I've 
done a little bit of shaping on the ends, cut it to length, and, and next step is to just split them down the middle or resaw them, as some people like to say. Now this is a nice way to go. It gives you basically book matched gunnels, uh, so that the two tend to spring at relatively the same uh, amount uh, compared to having two separate pieces of wood that um, that were not necessarily associated with each other the way these are. And to finish things up, I just take the two gunnels and I split them apart and run them both through the thickness planer at the same time to try and clean up the saw marks. From here on in, I'll be using my traditional methodology to recreate the rest of the boat. I'm not going to be making molds or anything that replicate the drawings. I'm just going to be taking basic dimensions off of those drawings to try and replicate the depth of the cockpit, for instance, and um, I'll probably try and replicate the profile of the bow and stern but uh, it's not quite the same as as doing any type of other construction like strip construction there's going to be no molds involved beyond basically some spreaders with a specific angle uh, cut into the ends of them so you can follow the rest of the process of building this kayak over my instagram feed follow hashtag sof tahi T-H-A-E. You'll find a link down in the description. Hope that was interesting to you, and uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell.